So this week we're talking about a pretty cool oyster recycling program called Sink Your Shucks. So today we're talking with Natasha Bro. She's from the Heart Research Institute of Gulf of Mexico Studies at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. So Natasha, I guess first off, what exactly is this Sink Your Shucks program? Hi, um, thanks for asking. Uh, the Sink Your Shucks program is a, a project that we're really proud of here at Heart. Um, it's a program where we, to put it very simply, we recycle oyster shells from local restaurants and we put them back out into our local bays. So those oyster shells going into the bays help to restore habitat, to restore reefs that otherwise wouldn't be able to come back to those areas. So how long have y'all been doing this program? This is actually our 15 year anniversary of the program. Awesome. So if y'all doing this for 15 years, uh, how many oysters have y'all restored and put in the back in the Gulf or habitat have y'all helped out? Good question. It's a lot of oysters. So we've um, recycled nearly 3 million pounds of oyster shells and we've restored about 40 acres of reefs back out in the bay. So that's a pretty neat thing to get to watch and to see. It's quite a, it's a, it's a large volume and it's a big impact. Why is it so important uh, to, to be able to rebuild these reefs for these oysters? So for a lot of reasons. So um, oyster reefs do a lot of things for us and for our communities. So. The oysters themselves are filtering water. They say a single adult oyster can filter up to 50 gallons of water a day. So if you think about when you scale up to a reef, that's millions of oysters. Think about how many more gallons that is that they're out there cleaning. So when we remove oyster shells from a habitat, we also remove the place where future oysters would grow. So oysters aren't like a clam where they can grow on a mud bottom. Um, they need a place to settle. So we've got all these, and in Texas, we have a lot of larval oysters out in the water column from, from some of our wild reefs. So putting the shell back out gives a place for those baby oysters that are out in the water column to go and settle. I'll show you my little prop that I have here. So this is, this one is a single recycled oyster shell that you can see here. And on it, you can see that one, two, three new oysters have grown upon the one recycled shell. So for every one oyster shell that we're putting back into the water, we're providing a place for many, many more to grow. Um, oysters also protect our shorelines. So in our coastal areas that are really vulnerable to erosion, that's a really important feature that they have. They they're sort of structure can break up wave action, which protects the shore from erosion. Another thing that they do, if if you're a fisherman, um, you'll be very familiar with this, they provide habitat for other things. So in an oyster reef, every little nook and cranny is full of something living there. So they provide places for other things to, to feed, to breed and to hang out. So this is one piece of material that was put out into the bay. And then you can kind of see on here, I need to, I used to have a count on this of how many uh, smaller oysters have grown on it. But as you can see, there's a ton. And in every little nook and cranny here, there's gonna be something living. We've got barnacles, we've got marine worms, we've got the oysters themselves. Then, you know, if this were living in the bay, it would have fish and shrimp and crabs. Um, so yeah, it's pretty impactful, I would say. For the process, so are you are getting these oysters, these shucked oysters from restaurants, what's the process of going from the restaurant back into the bay? So the oyster shells, you know, you're, you, have your dozen at the restaurant. Um, then the restaurant holds those shells back for us. We have bins at each of the restaurants. And we go out a couple of times a week and we have a, a great team that picks those shells up. They bring them out uh, to the Port of Corpus Christi where we store them for a period of at least six months. So 
as you can imagine, those oyster shells, when they're coming off of your table, and particularly when they've been sitting for a few days, they don't look so nice. But by the time um, six months have passed and that hot Texas sun and the rain, they really get nice and bleached and we're not, it keeps us from putting things back into the bay that we don't want to be putting back into the bay, bacteria or anything like that. If somebody wanted to get involved and help out, I know you'll have kind of yearly events with it. What, how would people reach out or figure out a way to, to help out this cause? Sure. Um, so a couple of things here. One thing that you can do from your town, from wherever you are, is encourage your local restaurants to get involved with an oyster shell recycling program. Of course, we want them to be involved with our oyster shell recycling program, but we're not everywhere. So, um, you know, one of the things that is really important to us is getting more restaurants on board. And when they hear from consumers that that's something that consumers want, they're more likely to to join us. You know, um, and then another thing that you can do, we do we have our yearly events that you mentioned. Those are a lot of fun. We hold them every May. Um, right now we're working with Goose Island State Park. They're wonderful um, partners and uh, we put, we restore reef along the shoreline there at Goose Island. So you can follow our social media pages. Uh, you can go to sinkyourshucks.org and um, visit the Heart Research Institute's website to get to kind of keep up with us because we will we host these events every spring um, and they're right before um, the oysters fat set or when the baby oysters come out in the summer so we like to have our material out before it's time for them to settle. So you know for 15 years that y'all have done this I mean stepping back and looking at it how, how big of an impact has this program had on oyster habitats and positive impacts do you think for the Gulf of Mexico? I mean, I think it's 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 a pretty impactful program and it's really neat as someone getting to, you know, the other side of this is our group where the Coastal Conservation and Restoration Laboratory, we also monitor these reefs. So we get to go back and look and watch the baby oysters growing on these reefs and watch all the fauna come back to the reefs and watch them become these vibrant places. And that's pretty amazing. And the, the other side of it is getting to watch the impact that it has on the local community. So we spend a lot of time um, visiting schools and talking to local groups about oyster restoration, habitat restoration, and those things are really important and people always learn something. I mean, I'm always learning something from the lab and um, so I think it's really important that the community understands what's going on in their backyard and in their bays. Natasha, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. It's really, really interesting. I kind of stumbled on it and saw it was a cool event and then the more I read just, I'm not a big oyster eater myself, but uh, just how cool these animals are and how much they impact and how much this is helping out. So awesome work y'all's group is doing and thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you so much for taking the time to reach out and for being interested. You don't have to be an oyster eater to be interested. <laughs> I, in I eat all the other seafood. It's just, uh, <laughs> I, I, I gotta have it cooked. I'm just, I can't do the raw oysters. I'm just not brave enough, I don't think. But thank you again for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you so much.